have a way of impacting generations and that's the impact we want you also to make different capacities sitting down to acquire phd so the class is heterogeneous some people are very good some are average and some are at the base so they are in the class and this guy says ability to provide instructions to different students of different abilities is effective teaching as well as is concerned because occasionally if you are not careful you find your attention being taken by the exceptional students in the class there are some great students and in most normal classes you are going to find one or two who are interested and there are those who are challenging mentally the gifted one before you put the thing on the board he knows where you are going we, we are trained to focus attention on the average performance so that you can accommodate both the super intelligent and those low coaches that come and why do we teach? We teach for knowledge, without doubt. We teach for skills. We teach for application. And we teach for information. That's why we go to class. So, as an effective teacher, you are supposed to anchor all of this. You want to teach in the class is planned. What I'm presenting now is planned. Intentional. But there are unplanned, unintentional ex exposures that our students have. And it goes away with something he has acquired. That to do well in this school, you have to be a strong man to complain. That's not part of any school curriculum. Communism is no way. But so how do they get exposed? It's unplanned. 
It's not intentional. So what are we saying? Learning. When you say learning has taken place, you are saying there's a change in the behavior of your students. So when you now ask, explain and list the three principles of this change and explain one, you expect that some change has happened to me and you ought to be able everything meaningful because learning is a change in behavior. Examination officer. Chata. At the charter, the chartered exam officer. I think he can tell you by heart the number of examination halls in the entire campus, in all the campuses in the Polytechnic. So I am sure you have a lot to benefit from his uh, lecture. Thank you, Dr. Moko. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And here, the topic is professional presumes that teaching had already taken place, examination had already also taken place. So we are now talking about the assessment of the papers that are before us and how do we do that. What do we mean by professionalism? I think it is important to get to know about it so that we would know what we are that we are actually professionals doing the work of professionalism. And here, it is stated that a professional person is an individual doing his work with sincerity, who maintains accepted etiquette and ethics while performing quality work. He has a very specialized knowledge base and commitment to work. Webster describes professionalism as the skill, good judgment, and polite behavior that is expected from a person who is trained to do a job well. Professionalism is commonly understood as an individual's adherence to a set of standards code of conduct or collection of qualities that characterize acceptable practice within an institution. Concerning the concept of professionalism, there are eight core areas, eight core characteristics. And I talked about the professional having competence, having knowledge, having conscientiousness with integrity respect, having emotional intelligence, appropriateness, and confidence. A professional will do more than expected. A professional does not look at the clock and say, okay, I will work only within this specified time because it's working time. Of course, you and I know that as a lecturer, the work is all embracing. You not only work while you are at school, you work at some other odd times to be able to make sure that everything is well delivered. He does what he says and says what he can do. He communicates effectively, praises his peers, not himself. Like our first lecturer, guest lecturer here has said. You see that he was praising a lot of the people who actually he got knowledge from and said most of the things he said he's speaking their mind. He shares his knowledge and of course he says thanks, he's always appreciative, keeps a smile on the face and the right attitude in the heart. Marking criteria, this applies the knowledge skills and application you expect the student to demonstrate at the completion of an assessment task. 
concerning marking scheme or guidelines which all of us know because I would wonder if anyone would make assessment without having a marking scheme or marking guide. This provides broad outlines for success and allocates a range of marks for each component. A marking scheme is a document which explains how students' responses to assessment tasks will be evaluated. It identifies assessment criteria and articulates qualitative standards of achievement for each criteria. Now, section 3 of the Algebra Polytechnic Student of Student Handbook of Information 2021-22 edition stipulates the following as it relates to assessment and evaluation of students. We have progress through the program. In that paper, it states clearly what and what must be done for a student to progress from one level to the other. And there it gives the minimum pass mark in all courses to be what? 40%. And says all other issues must be recommended from the departmental board to the school board and finally to the academic board before it is taken as certified. The cost of assessment involves classwork, it could be test, it could be quiz, it could be homework, it could be assignments, or it could be practicals that are done either in the workshop, lab, studio, or field. But for the semester exam, it is a written one in which at the end of the examination, the scripts are the ones now to be assessed. And here it is taken that in academics, examination is the summit of all academic work. Because if a lecturer has taught and has not assessed, then the whole work has not been completed. Once the period of examination is mentioned, it is the duty of all examiners, whether they receive the notice or not, to find out from the relevant quarters which day their paper is coming up and be able to follow it up well to ensure that the questions are set and well ready before time. So you should ensure that question papers set by them are accompanied with proper marking guidelines or scheme because that would be what will make it complete. Just taking questions is not enough. It must be accompanied with marking guidelines and scheme to know whether the paper set has actually met the required standard. Then the ready as one of the examiners, because you are one of the board of examiners, to attend the departmental board, which will be the first test, the departmental board meeting with other examiners to consider the result at the appropriate time. and uh, committed, dedicated MIS Director of the Polytechnic. Before she starts, we all of applause. We are welcome, Madam. So, and the topic is professionalism in presentation, preparation and presentation of the results. So, academic results actually are the core So I've heard so much about professionalism, professionalism, and so on. We all started from somewhere. Before you can become a professional, you first be a novice. So and it is only those who actually set their mind to listen, to understand. You know, we learn also that not just listen, but also understand. So, and we know that results is the core of any educational institution. Very, very vital. 
that's a, a very major reason why we are here. We won't have our trip to the tech if there are no results to be prepared. And students are here not just to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner and walk away. They also depend on the results. So our results are obtained after students have written their exams at the end of the semester. We have two semesters in the session. And so at the end of each semester, results are also presented. And usually, it is only students that are registered that can have their results prepared and presented. Only registered students. And usually, as an exam officer or a program coordinator, you get the list of registered students from MIS. You can be via the MIS supervisor in the School of Business Studies. You can come directly to our office, MIS, and our Who prepared the academic results? It is the duty of some persons to prepare these academic results. Lecturers. Lecturers prepare it because there are different things that make up the results. The scores. Result does not just, you don't just give back to results without scores. And who are the uh, sources of these scores? It's the lecturers. So it starts from you as a lecturer. You are part of those preparing it. Because if you just submit your score sheet that contains only Section I exam, no coursework. You have done half work, and we can't use that to compute or prepare results. So it's very important that as lecturers, we are also part of those who prepare the results. Don't just see that, yeah, it's the exam office, or oh, it's the exam officer, it's the MIS. No, please play your part as a lecturer. Also, the exam officers are part of those who have to get this result. Or as lecturers, you go and submit your score sheet to the lecturers. And then, of course, MIS is there to do the processing. We have a, a custom-made software that we use in processing our results. Please, let's not be distracted in the small, small results that are being presented to you. <laughs> so, in your school board results, you see, it's very good for us to attend meetings. Departmental board, we'll still talk about that. Departmental board, school boards, and academic board. So, school board meetings, uh, sorry, version of results, shows the math number of the students. It carries their full name. Their full names usually are in alphabetical order, beginning with the sole name and then other names. All the courses for the semester, I thought we'll see all of that now on the screen. All the courses for the semester, if the students are offering 12 courses, you see them following each other. If the students are offering 10 courses, just like that, all the courses for the semester. And the scores. In the school board version, you have coursework, sectional uh, exam, and then the grades. Those are the three components that makes up a score for a course. The coursework, the exam and then the grade itself so you usually see those things there then you see the previous uh, computation previous tcu previous uh, tvp previous gpa the total cost unit the tvp total value point and then the gpa grade point uh, aggregate you see that you see the previous you see the present and then we also see the cumulative GPA, the CGPA. All of their names are usually arranged in alphabetical order, I said before, and usually is the sole name that pops up first. So that's why even when students are filling their forms, they always fill their sole name separate from the other names. So that we could also continue using it. Because the way they have registered, that's how we capture them into the result processing software. So then we also have the other version of results called the academic board uh, results. This academic board shows their math numbers also, matriculation numbers, their full names, and then the previous present and cumulative uh, values, the CGPA, all of them now follows. And then their grades. Sorry, something else in the school board version. You, you see the number of carryover that each student has at the end. Just the total number of carryover, four carryover, CO4, CO2. You know that person has paid two courses. 
So when those two forces can be in that very present semester, they may be in previous semester, but it will just lose the total number of carryover. So you will not say, okay, because we are holding school board, ah, let's see what we can do. Let's wait two courses because somebody is having two courses there. You will, may only be surprised that the carryovers, they may be there for previous semester. And there is nothing you can do when it's a previous uh, semester. So school board is uh, considered by the school board group and the academic board is considered by the academic board uh, group made of management. Result presentations. In presenting our results, usually the very first point to present results is at the departmental board. The departmental board is the very first place to present results and usually is presented by the exam officer. Once there's a departmental board meeting, the PC is seated, the HOD is seated, other academic uh, staff, they are seated, technologists and all. And so the exam officer presents his results, class by class. Then at the school board, results are presented by the HOD. Unless a HOD is not available, unavoidably absent, that's when he will now give a, maybe either another lecturer or even the exam officer say, please present this result on my behalf. So by your school board, the HOD is the one who presents the results to the school board, at school board level. And then, at academic board level, it is the dean that presents results. So while the exam officer is presenting the result at the departmental board level, he has supporters, the assistant exam officer, you are there ready with some other vital documents. And so what are these uh, vital documents? What are the things we should check for? before any presentation. There are some things we need to check for before we can carry out uh, any presentation. One, check for errors in math number. Every department has a departmental code. For example, in School of Evening Studies, your, the math number begins with five. So by the math number, we always first start with three characters, which is the prefix for the school. ICT, School of ICT, uh, SBS, School of Business, uh, AGT, Agri Technology, and so on. We always carry that prefix. Then followed by a slash. It's good as a lecturer or as an exam officer, particularly, or a PC. You know all of this because at times it's uh, not too good when a HOD or a PC is being asked, ah, why is this math number different? You say, I don't know. Please, let's know. It's good you are aware of this. So every math number begins with the first three letters for the school, the slash, which is always the forward slash, and then the next three letters, sorry, numbers, or next three digits, is usually the department code. 501 is for accountancy. 525 is for computer science. 506 is for civil engineering. So please, know that which is your department. So once there is one odd one out there, in the list of results, even if it's 500, just a scan through, you easily know that uh -uh, this is 506, 506, how come 507, which is electrical, there. So please know the code for your department. The next three digits is for the department. Then the next two digits is for the session. So 50623 means the person came in 2324. So 506 is the department. Then 23 is the session, then the last four digits or the last five digits, whether ND or HND, is just the serial number. Are we together? So please, that's how you check for errors as an example. When you check for this error in math number, it will minimize when you come to school board, they say, wrong math number, wrong math number. You know it can be very embarrassing. And there are times, once I just stand and say, observation, everybody say, hey, mother doctor. But all the same, as much as possible, let's do our best so that we have a wonderful result presentation. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Madam. My experience for the department, program coordinators, examination officers, my wonderful colleagues. This is the second time I'm observing something that touches my mind. When I was doing my second master's degree in the University of Benin, the particular student who was a first class student, 
was writing at the time of Friday and I saw her in, in tears and I was like, what's happening to me? She said, I don't understand. I became emotional. So the only thing for me to discover later that the siren we were hearing from UBTH, upset with Faculty of Management Sciences, was the siren conveying the cops of her mother down to Oluku, where she be buried. And she was still so stable. After the exam, I took my time to check the result. I discovered that she had 83%. I was like, this is wonderful. Today, again, a very wonderful woman stood here and just finished delivering her lecture. That is the director of MI. As she was delivering her lecture, I was carried away. I was like, this is my son in high school. Then the assistant general administration whispered to me that this wonderful woman just lost her father yesterday. And she could still stand here, that stable, and deliver a very, a very wonderful lecture. May your soul of the Father be with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam Officer, please take note of this. She talked about registration. At any point in time, please take note. Whether at the Parmetal Board, School Board, and Academic Board, your misconduct cases must be with you. Heads of department are paying query now because they didn't reflect what exam misconduct cases in their results. And in error, such students in results were published. Please be very, very careful with this. The basic thing I want to talk about is this. You were made to understand that the session is from MIS. Please, having received the registration from MIS, put it down and get the report from verification unit. Any student that has not submitted this or applied for verification is not yet qualified to see his result. Therefore, the exam officer are not expected to forward such students result for consideration either at departmental or school or academic board. The, the register, number of registers will be given to you from their minds. Please, it's for your own consumption. They ensure that only those students who have submitted files, whose files have been verified by the verification unit and reports received back by you through your HOD, this is the only thing we to prepare. If you go ahead to prepare a single uh, student's result whose entry requirement has not been verified, you as a officer, the HOD will be held accountable for that. Please be very sure that no such day is allowed in into the result we're preparing for consideration. Thank you very much. Yes, it's, it's, it's question and uh, answer time. Well, because time will not permit us to take all the questions that may be bothering our minds. We will just approve that two questions be directed to each speaker. What are those things that we are expected to do to be seen as the true children of the NTSO? When I was in the second year school, I had no dream, I had no ambition. But in the village, we didn't know there was another life after second school. We only graduated to find that we needed to still try. And um, even when I picked the courses I went to study, it was my results that picked the course for me, not what I wanted to do. But when I got to school, I was challenged by the lecturer that taught me. I saw something that I would like to become. And so, um, that set the tone for me. Among my classmates, our colleagues, we had a group, and we just told ourselves that we needed to answer to the title professor. We have about four professors in that group now. Yeah. But you cannot become a professor in the polytechnic. Yeah. I had opportunities to enter universities where I could have become a professor, but at the last moment, the thing would slip. Interviews found appointable and all that. So when I came here, I was still looking and imagining why I ought to be here. I thought I would spend two years and get out. I didn't know it was going to be a long journey. But one thing, I like challenges. I like challenge. I'm not afraid of work. And uh, I also learned that you can learn from people. I learned from people. 
I'm observant. I will ask you questions. I'll go and find out by myself. Um, and I decided to choose the line of humility. But I found that if you can pay the price of subjugating yourself anyway, you have opportunity to learn. But if you come posing as no it all, you are not likely to get help from the people who know some things more than you. So I told that line. And um, I read a lot outside my area. Uh, uh, I'm only curious when it comes to that. Because I just tell myself, you never know when you need this piece of information. So I read. I have plenty of jotters around me. Something comes in, I drop it there. This one comes in, I drop it there. And I made up my mind that I think it was going to be a challenge that as much as possible, I'll be an expression of what I believe. It could be tough. So it means I'm not definitely going to ask anybody to give me gratification for anything. Never done it. As trying and as uh, tempting as it could be, I know. Girls and women out of bands have taken my own out of the group, so whatever is remaining is out of bands. What is up in my mind? That uh, if somebody is willing to learn, you remember there was a time they gave us, Nigel gave us uh, an award. I'm 18 or something. First, or not two of us. That was the first time I saw him. Very young. That's it's still young anyway. They said this man in accountancy. Yes, is yes. No, no. You pass, you pass. You pay, you pay. So two of us were brought out by my best hands. I saw my when I was packing up my office, I saw my, my certificate. So um, there's so much. I like writing. If you give me a task, I will do it to you. I will find out how to do it. So at each level, honestly, I like to say it's imitating me. me. When I came to Poli and I encountered late Koshobuji, Mustafa, creative user of language. That was all brought us together. Shobuji is a creative user of language. Then I encountered Dr. Egwe, come and see another one. So I have met people. I see I can see many of see people too. <laughs> who are good in the area. Yes. And so when, if you use an expression where I am, I can let you know that I have written it down. In the next few conversations I'm going to have with people, I will bring it in. And while you are praising me in my mind, I say, you don't know where I was here. So, but honestly, I want to challenge you people. Give me a cross to teach. As I told you at the beginning, I want to be the best. I go and tap up for internet of things. Find out. So that at each time you stand in front, you are exuding enthusiasm. I won't stay in my office for students to come and tell me that they have my, my class. I go there because that's, well, that's part of responsibility. I go to the place. And somehow I always manage to have a relationship with my students. There are people out there who think you have touched them. I do have plenty of people that have touched me. But I keep learning. So I want to encourage, I don't know how I'll answer this question. <laughs> but the issue is just be a model of what you see in other people. The lecturer has taught you in that place, wherever you attended, model what the lecturer did to impact you and also channel it to this country. Because the, the influence of a lecturer of a teacher. There's no way you will know how far your influence is going back. So model do things. And when one of my lecturers do this came here and I found me how to do it. He said I always knew I didn't know I would get that far. He said I always knew you would come this far. So let it be that when we our teachers encounter us, they are encouraged that their reward is not just in heaven. So my question is is this the responsibility of the class rep, 
the school management or the department to provide learning and instructional material. Well, this thing is common in the politics these days. That's my question. Thank you, sir. It's a very good question. It's a good one. Actually, the, the, well, there's no way we can exculpate the polytechnic management from, from this, from blame here. But actually, it comes down to the department. Because when, when courses are allocated, the HOD stands proxy for the rector, for the dean, for rector to ensure that learning materials are made available. I think it is poor coordination and for whatever reason that someone will go against a decision taken by a group and one of the group also goes outside. Maybe he thinks that the, the somebody is benefiting unduly from the, the collections. So I think that the department ought to make instructional materials available. But on our own, um, are, are that now. But sometimes even the ones they have in the department, because usually you go to class and say, okay, class will give me marker. And he brings tired marker. <laughs> marker itself is tired. So what do we do? So uh, maybe thank God the dean is here. <laughs> so he's listening. I, I will appreciate the situation in which an inmates can they have this refill ink. There's ink. So that when the matter is dry, if you buy the fill the fill up for class reps or they have it in the departmental office or wherever, they can come there to refill. I think it will go a long way in helping to sort out these things. For ideally, the school ought to provide instructional materials for lecturers. In the country of school we provide instructional materials for lecturers. These materials are not provided. The live idol in the stop of the school of the students. No criticism has ever applied to the matter. We have matters. Every examination matters the request of them and their supervisors. So if you need matter, approach the stop is a preposition in the living matter. Thank you very much, Director, members of the High Table, distinguished colleague, good morning. I, as you must have been told, our committee was set up to do a communique on this uh, training and workshop. Incidentally, I was appointed as chairman of the committee. And we have been here and we have been learning massively from the wealth of knowledge of the three speakers. And we are lucky enough to have experienced hands handling the three different topics. By and large, the first topic uh, exposed us to a lot of things to be done during our teaching and learning process, during our interaction with the students in the same manner, the way we behave in classrooms, as well as the way we deliver our lecture. That we need to be confident before we go for lecture, we need to prepare ourselves adequately. We also need not to underrate any student. We should welcome all forms of questions from students. Anything we don't know, we should be courageous enough to tell the students and we find out. We should not shout any student down because the students are the reasons why we are here, the lecturers. Without the students, we have no privilege to be here. And the students are also here to learn from us because we that are seated today, we are taught by different categories of lecturers. So it is very, very important. And uh, there are so many distractions 
in the learning process, within the environment and outside the environment. We were told by the first speaker how to handle them and how to accommodate them so that we get the best out of the exercise. Uh, I also want to appreciate uh, Dr. G.C. Uoko that took us along the lanes of how to go about marking and submission of results. On a very great day, those of us that stayed here for more than three decades, we discovered that marking is one of the key areas in examination. And it is very tasking, it is very tempting, and it is very strenuous. By and large, we, if we start our marking on time, according to Dr. Uwoko, pick your scripts the same day your, your papers uh, was written, you go ahead and start marking. Prepare your marking scale in a comprehensive manner that even though you are not around, somebody else can do it without having any challenge or challenges as it were. He also told us the preparation of results that we need to familiarize ourselves with the score sheet, what constitutes coursework, which among other things, you have attendance, you have quiz, you have assignment, and you have test. That the 14 months allocated to coursework is not just for one of them, naturally it's supposed to be for the four components of coursework. They also told us about the 60 months that I set aside for the examination and how we should be able to distribute them among the questions the students should attend for the purpose of the exam in order to get the best out of it. And uh, why Dr. Mrs. Ebe Odoto uh, was uh, using technical jargons along some areas that some of us were hearing some for the first time. Uh, we are happy because uh, she is a guru as far as uh, that area is concerned. He has told us that we have three boards that are responsible for the consideration of results. The departmental board, the school board, as well as the academic board. And preparation and presentation of results are of different shapes among these uh, categories of board. Uh, first and foremost, the exam officer is saddled with the responsibility of preparing a presentation of uh, results at the uh, departmental board. Thereafter, the HOD will take over the seat of presentation of results at the school board. And while at the academic board, the day is saddled with such responsibility. And the preparation of results are not of the same shape. There are some in fact, at the departmental level, results is, it, it contains a lot of information, comprehensive information. But as the results graduate from one level to the other, the information is being said, shared, and at the end of the day, it filters away until you get to academic board. They also advise us to be familiar with the different coding system, uh, subject codes, uh, departmental codes, school codes, and uh, so many other things. So that when something is missing, when mark number is not familiar with others, we should be able to identify it right from the beginning, instead of allow us to be exposed to embarrassment, okay, at different board levels. So I want to appreciate all of you, sir. Uh, thank you so much. I think uh, that's uh, uh, the summary I can typically give for now. God bless us all. Thank you, Dr. Gunosu. Uh, well, that was a compendium of all that we have listened to here today. Permit me to stand on the under of the first. First, let me thank the Chief Executive of the State.
the Polytechnic Director, Dr. S.S. Kumar, for approving and at the same time funding this workshop. We are appreciating and thank you. I also want to thank the principal officers of the Polytechnic for honoring us with their presence. We thank them very much. I thank all the school for also coming out with their friends. Let me respectfully thank our resource person, Dr. Eji Susse. I thought I knew everything, but by the time it was done, it's later, I realized that I just started learning. So thank you very much. I also want to thank my mentor in the examination committee, Dr. Wonko, for doing what we know how to do best. We also thank you. I want to particularly single out Dr. Ibn Odinto for finding time to be here with us today. Only yesterday in the morning, she lost her father. Even at that, she took some courage to say, yes, I want to be part of this program. Doctor, we thank you very much. So on behalf of the School of Business Studies, we say thank you very much. Our program coordinators, we thank you for finding time to lead your joint officers, assistant general officers, and your lecturers to attend this program. I'm convinced that all of us will take at least one strong thing out of this workshop. And this is the purpose for this workshop. Once again, I thank all of you and your audience. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, we started with prayer and it is only appropriate and logical that we conclude with prayers. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for learning, it's never too much. Thank you because this is even more so when the learning is appropriate. Lord, all that we have been told today, all that we have been taught, we internalize them and we ask you for grace to be able to always go by what we are taught and never to detract from any of it. This and many more we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Yes, I think uh, the training has opened uh, new vistas to this profession called teaching. I think from now we should not be talking about lecturing, we should be talking about teaching, imparting knowledge. So I think the, the training has opened new ideas, has opened new vistas as to how we manage our classrooms and impart this knowledge. And I pray that we all can analyze it and God helping us to be able to do what we are supposed to be doing better. It's an eye opener anyway, because I think like what they said is the first of a kind. And, and I believe, especially the part-time lecturers, it has really, you know, given them that uh, orientation, a deep orientation. And I believe many have learned so many things. It's not just coming to the classroom and teach. There are still all that needy, greedy things that you need to know as a lecturer. And I thank God for the facilitators. They are well grounded and they're really well deep, in-depth in the information that we're giving to us. Well, the training has been a very wonderful one. And uh, from all indications, especially for the long, young lecturers, they were recently employed. At least they have benefited a lot from the experiences shared by uh, our elders within the school. As well with regards to teaching, managing class through students, Apart from that, ensuring marking of scripts, which has to do with students' performance, proper evaluation. Apart from that, students' results, how to compute them and how to present them at the various strata of evaluation, whether at the departmental board, at the school board, or at the academic board level, which is the final level for results to be announced as a result. Before then, there is no score that is regarded as a result. But at least some of our young lecturers today have gotten enough knowledge 
careful readers to how to teach, manage exams, and proper marking and presentation of results, which has to do with proper academic evaluation. Thank you. I am Dr. Abubakar Idris Oseni, Dean, School of Evening Studies, Aochi Polytechnic, Aochi. When I became the Dean, I told myself and I promised my rector that by the grace of God, I have two objectives to achieve. One, to uplift the academic standard of School of Evening Studies so that the narration that uh, it is only when you are not too sound you come to evening. No, evening study is not where anything goes. It is as strong as regular program. I have the belief that by the grace of God, uh, the School of Evening Studies will, comp will compete favorably with the regular program. Because the two results, they are the same. They are being signed by the same management and in the same materials in our Chief Polytechnic we use both for regular and for evening. And by the grace of God, with the little time we have spent, things have changed positively. Secondly, we equally promise to increase the revenue base of the school. And by the grace of God, we are also doing that. As for this uh, training, for you to uplift the academic standard, you must first of all tell your people what they need to know. You cannot do what you don't know. So that we have to organize this training, capture its academic professionalism. We're able to carve out the three topics. First and foremost, we have just written, we have just resumed a new session. And lecturers have started going to class. So that's why the first guest speaker was able to tell us effective teaching and classroom management, what it entails. And if we follow his lecture strictly, we'll be able to gain a lot. Then, secondly, exam has been conducted, marking is currently going on. So we equally let our lecturers know the way and manner to mark. The professionalism evolved in marking. So that at the end of the day, it will not just be a plus to the school, it will also be a plus to the lecturer, avoiding them be having problem because marking is a serious issue. Then thirdly, after this result will be prepared. The, uh, the examination officers and the assistant examination officers, they are all here. From the last lecture, they will be able to gain on how to prepare and present results for departmental consideration, school board consideration, and academic board consideration. In my opening remark, I said I have no doubts that the speakers will do justly to the selected topics and by the grace of God I am 100% convinced that they have done that. I also want to appreciate the polytechnic management, especially the rector, Dr. Salis Oshie Omar. Since we came on board, he has been very, very cooperative and supportive to the School of Evening Studies, most especially to my lecturers, because you as a dean without lecturer, you are nothing. So I appreciate my lecturers, my examination officers, my program coordinator, most especially my two assistants, Assistant Dean Academics and Assistant Dean Administration. Thank God for everything. We